Hey, what's up guys? I'm Steven from TechSteveHD.com, making technology easier. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Lenovo Smart Screen. Now, the Smart Screen is part of a series from Google's Home Assistant that allows you not to only give commands, but you also can see what you're doing in certain applications. Now, this is the 8-inch version, but there is a 10-inch version. The biggest difference of the 8-inch version over the 10-inch version is that the 8-inch version has a screen resolution of 1280 by 800, where the 10.1-inch has a resolution of 1920 by 1200. And due to the screen size, I do believe they're going to look close to the same. Another difference between the 8-inch version and the 10.1-inch version is that the 8-inch is only available in white and gray, where the 10.1-inch is available in white and bamboo on the backside. They both have a 720p video camera with 5 megapixels and has a viewing angle of 86 degrees. Both units has an array of 4 different microphones. There's two on the top as well as two on the side. On top of both devices, you're going to find your mute button as well as a volume up and down. And on the side of it, you're going to find a switch to close off the camera if you want to have a little bit more privacy. But now let me show you how to set up the device from the time you turn it on. <laughs> From your Android or iPhone, go ahead and download the Google's Home app from the App Store and then go ahead and open it up. If you haven't set it up already, go ahead and set it up and this will be the first screen that you get. Now as you can see, it found my device. I'm going to go ahead and press Setup. Make sure that the display name is on your phone and then go ahead and press Yes. Once the device is found and connected, you should get a series of numbers on your screen and make sure they match. Once they do, go ahead and press Yes. And if you want to help Google's Home Assistants get smarter, you can go ahead and press Yes, I'm in. Now let's give your Google device a name. Let's call it Family Room. And then press Next. On this screen, you're going to go ahead and enter your Wi-Fi. If you have other Google Home devices, it'll go ahead and remember it. But if you don't, look for your Wi-Fi and then enter the password. After that, press Next. Now it's programming the Wi-Fi code into the Google's display. You may be notified that it's going to do an update. But while it's doing that, let's go ahead and set up the rest of the features here. Here's a list of different things you need to know and you can click on each one and it'll tell you what it is. After you read them, go ahead and press next. Now let's set up the voice match and what this is used for when different people live in your home, each person can give it commands so it kind of knows who they are and it won't give the wrong commands. Go ahead and press agree. And this is all based off your email address. Voice match has been set up. I can now hit agree. On this screen, you can enter your address or zip code so it knows how to look for local events. Next, you can add your different music services. So if you have Google's Music, you can do that, as well as Google's Play Music, Spotify, Pandora, and Deezer. Once those are set up, go ahead and press Next. And keep in mind, the checkboxes identify which ones are set up already. If you have any video services like HBO Go, Stars, you can go ahead and add those now so it can display them and stream on the screen. If you want to set up the video call-in for the camera built-in, you can enter your phone number, and once it sends an SMS text message, it will allow you to go ahead and uh, set that up as well. On this screen, you can have it to share your Google's photo on the display whenever it's not been used, an art gallery, or a full-size clock. Let's use art gallery. Choose which art gallery you would like to see. I'm just going to use the default one. If you want to get promotions and updates, you can go ahead and sign up right here. Now this is a summary of everything you've done, and you can add video services if you didn't have them before. You can also add a payment method if you like. Once that's done, go ahead and press continue. Your display is now set up. You can go ahead and press continue if you like. With everything set up, let me show you some of the different controls. If you slide this way, you can see the different events. And you can see it's pretty responsive overall. When you slide down from the top, if you have any of these smart devices, you can control them right here from the screen. And from the bottom, if you lift up, you can set up the automatic brightness up to the brightest. You can control the volume of the speaker. And you do have a do not disturb mode if you don't want it to be able to listen to you or anything. Under this gear, you can look at the Wi-Fi, learn about this device, and more. Now let me show you how to use some of the settings in the application. Let's do the voice match first. Go ahead and press on the little picture icon at the bottom of the screen. Once you pull up the account, go ahead and press on settings. Now press on assistance, and then press on voice match. On this screen, you can go ahead and add it to your existing voice match but let's go and teach it again, so for those who haven't seen it before. Go ahead and press retrain, and then do these commands. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. Since you were the one to set up the device, you can add other people to share their voice by pressing on invite others, 
and then send them an email. Once they get the email, they can go ahead and do the voice match themselves and then it'll link the voice match commands to their Gmail account. Now let's say you wanna add more music services. Go ahead and press add at the top again. You'll get this screen and at the bottom you'll see add music and audio. Now here's the options I have in San Diego, California on this Galaxy S9. You have YouTube music where you can pay for a service and then you can choose any song you want just by giving it the name. I think it's around $10 a month. Next you have Google's music, which allows you to choose a artist and then it streams a radio station. The only downside is about this, if you don't pay for a service, you won't be able to choose a artist and song at the same time. Next you have Pandora. I'll go ahead and link into that by pressing on it. And then you'll need to sign into your Pandora account. Now to have Pandora linked, let's go and give it a command. Okay, Google. Play Carly B. Playing Cardi B on Pandora. Next, let's sign into Spotify, but I do pay for the premium version of this. After you log in your account, you're gonna get this pop-up that is gonna connect Google to Spotify account. Now let's give it a try. Okay, Google. Play Bruno Mars 24 Karat on Spotify. All right, 24K Magic by Bruno Mars. Playing on Spotify. Now, if you look at the phone here, if you press on it, you can see that it's playing and then you can control the volume right there from the display. You can also open up the Spotify app and stop casting. One thing I like about this as well is that you can control the volume right from your phone if you need to. All the Google products will support smart devices like Nest thermostats. You also have plugs and all kinds of things. But now I'm gonna show you how to set it up with the Philips Hue system. To add any kind of smart device, from the home screen, go ahead and press add. Next, you wanna go ahead and press on set up a device. At the bottom, go ahead and click on works with Google. Since I'm setting up the Philips Hue system, I'm gonna go ahead and type in Philips. Now press on it. It'll take you to the Philips Hue's website and go ahead and sign in with any credentials that you made when you originally set up your lighting system. Now, if you're logged in successful, you'll need to grant permission to Google. And that's pretty much it. Since I already have them set up, let's give it a basic command. Okay, Google. Turn all lights on. Okay, turning four lights on. And at the bottom of the screen, you can choose which colors you would like to use. And the great thing is now they're named, you can go ahead and preset those in your system. Okay, Google. Turn all lights off. Sure, turning off four lights. So I hope you have a better understanding how to set up a Google's Home Assistant with the display. Now, if you have more questions, since all the Google's Home Assistant software is exactly the same, I have the Google's Home Hub, which I haven't did a video on yet. So if you have any questions about how to use the software, let me know and I'll see if I can incorporate it into the video on this. Another thing I'm gonna show you guys in future videos is I have the Nest system and I'm gonna show you how to connect this to your device and make a more of a home automated system so you can give it voice commands and create routines. So if you like this kind of video, make sure you go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.